Hello there. To say I am loving Breaking Bad at the moment is a complete understatement because I am only up to episode 4 of season 1 and I am already in love with this show. Like that 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 word doesn't even do it justice. But yeah, what's going on guys? It is your boy Ellie Moses, your 22 year old law film student here from Sydney, Australia. Shooting your shot baby. And today we are continuing our journey watching Breaking Bad for the first time with our reaction to episode 4 of season 1 titled Cancer Man. And I think... This episode implies what the end of the last episode implied, that all is going to be revealed and Walter is going to tell, tell Skylar about his cancer situation. So yeah, let's waste some more time. Let's get into the reaction. If you guys enjoy the energy, my style of reaction, feel free to like and subscribe. Only if you do enjoy. I'm not forcing you to do anything. Um, only if you do enjoy. So yeah, let's slay this reaction. Let's have some fun and let's see what the show's cooking. Let's go. Operation Breathman, every time you and me are on a stakeout together, all right? Breath can like a buzzard off a shit wagon. Now, I know I'm only 29 seconds in and pausing, but I feel like this show, each scene is layered um, in tone um, in like various degrees, if that makes sense. So each scene or sometimes different scenes will have two or three layers of tone. And there, although there might be a comedic tone to it, the second or third layer um, of tone will be trying to imply something much more serious. Like I said in the last episode in that scene um, revolving around Walter White Jr. and Hank. Now in this, obviously Operation Icebreaker um, implies what they're going to do with this drug bust. Um, but at the same time, I feel like Operation Icebreaker um, is in full operation as well for Hank in terms of breaking the ice with Skylar um, about his cancer treatment or and cancer treatment and cancer diagnosis so that's how i read into it because i feel like this show has a lot of like great symbolism foreshadowing and fantastic writing all right operation tbd thanks for nothing go last guy he read it out was none other than his uh, cousin emilio koyama you thinking the cousin found out and took revenge could be turns out he's missing too uh, about that <laughs> normally i'd say someone did the world a favor Turns out we find two grams of meth in it. We take it to the lab. They come back, they tell us it is the purest they've ever seen. 99.1%. I mean, our chemist is blown away. He said he couldn't do the same thing better. One time our guy swabbed the filter element and found the same 99.1 meth. So be on notice. We got new players in town. <laughs> now, we don't know who they are, or where they come from, but they possess an extremely high skill set. I mean, personally, I think an Albuquerque just might have a new king. I love that juxtaposition cut right there of Hank doubling down and being all serious with his debriefing. Um, and, you know, we've got a new player in town. These guys have a high skill set. The juxtaposition cut straight um, cuts to, you know, uh, Walter's dad bod and then him brushing his teeth with his glasses acting all dorky and stuff <laughs> it's just like yes the new kingpin in town you know um because him and Jesse are totally you know in sync at the moment <laughs> hey I want a beer yeah I want Shania Twain to give me a tuggy <sighs> guess what I ain't having it either how much more soda <laughs> yeah sure honey do you need anything no thank you okay I'll put it right back I'm guessing this is the night after, or not the night after, but the day after he disclosed the cancer diagnosis to his wife? I'm not sure. No. What are you kidding me? You look like a damn movie star, man. Girls gotta be lining up left and right. Tell him how good looking he is. He's adorable. Well, he don't wanna be freaking adorable. He wants to be hot. Anyway, you see what I'm talking about? It's a female perspective. She's supposed to say that. Look, a guy didn't got to look like uh, you know, Charles Peston. I'm talking Moses days. Ellie Here's Moses. All right. You just got to have confidence. Confidence and, uh, and persistence. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. I chased your Aunt Marie here all over creation. I mean, I kept bugging her for a date. She kept saying no. Well, I asked you like 50 times. Yeah, it was before they tightened the stocking laws. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how, how about your dad here? That there's a good story, Walt. Tell him how you met Skylar. Mom was a waitress in Los Alamos, and dad said that thing to you. Well, actually, your mother wasn't a, a waitress. <clears throat> it was a summer job, and uh, 
she was the hostess and she also worked the cash register. And I used to go in there a lot because it was close enough to the lab where I could ride my bicycle. It got to be so that I would only go in when I knew she was working. <laughs> when it was slow, she would lean against the counter doing her crossword puzzles, but, but kind of hiding it, right? Pretending that she was still working. And uh, <laughs> eventually I caught her looking over at me. So I began saying, excuse me, um, 14 across, seven letter word for what you call it. Uh, may I ask what, what you wrote down? And uh, well, that got us talking and uh, it's terrible at those puzzles. <laughs> I don't think that I finished even one of them, but your mother would do them in ink. Very smooth. <laughs> I bet you didn't think your old man had it in him, huh? But that's what I'm talking about. That's persistent, you see? Once you set your cap for something or somebody, you got to just, you know, whoa, Sky. Mom, uh, are you all right? Hey, hey. Shh, Mom. it's okay. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Ask him. Oh, yeah, she does know. And he's going to reveal it to the whole fam now. She put him in that situation. Walt? Uh, I have cancer. Lung cancer. It's bad. I won't pause now. Wait one second. I'll wait for the scene to end. Okay, there we go. You know what made the impact of that scene much better? And it goes to um, what I said last episode again with the show's uh, emphasis on diegetic sound and, um, you know, lack of, you know, somber or melancholy music in that scene or scenes that tend to get serious. Um, the show places an emphasis on diegetic sound, you know, real world sounds that emanate from the actual scene, you know, the birds, everything. And this was a freaking like proper conversation. The way it was written, it felt like a natural conversation. Um, a family would have, you know, on a barbecue, started off with the great banter, um, you know, with Hank, um, uh, with Walter White Jr. You know, you get invested in the scene uh, that way. And the dialogue, um, again, the way it's written, it feels natural. It doesn't feel like that's not how ordinary people would talk on a Sunday barbecue. Um, and then obviously the switch up in tone, um, you know, you had the beautiful story of Hank telling, um, uh, sorry, Walter telling how he met Skylar. Obviously, that caused Skylar to burst um, in tears because she knows the situation. She knows that Walter's not going to be there forever um, and possibly not even be there to meet his young daughter or see her grow up. And um, yeah, obviously, and then it led to the culmination, uh, culminated in Walter telling um, Hank and co and the whole family. Um, and yeah, I think it was really, really well executed. <clears throat> Walt, uh, whatever happens, I hope this goes without saying, but um, whatever happens, I want you to know that um, I'll always take care of your family. Shout out, Hank. You know what I love about this situation as well? Like I said again, the dialogue scenes are absolutely fantastic. But because this show obviously is now 10 years old in terms of when it last, um, when it aired its final season, I just know there's a storm brewing in terms of like, obviously this is the major bombshell for the family. But on the horizon, I know there's a major storm brewing in terms of like, you know, they're talking about second options for Hank in terms of getting the best oncology team, radiologist. And um, I'm thinking to myself, Hank's second op, uh, sorry, Walt's second option is to start a major drug operation. <laughs> and shit's about to hit the fan.
I hate seeing that stuff, man. It's like Jesse's situation. I'm interested to see how it develops across the entire show. His reliance on drugs, his addiction to drugs. Interesting to see how he changes the character because obviously yesterday he didn't want to lose his two mates who probably don't owe him a like who probably he doesn't owe them a thing. And it's going to be interesting to see if any of Jesse's contacts come back to haunt um, him and Walter's operation in the future. Is he hallucinating or are these guys rocking up with grenades and machetes to his house? No, he's not hallucinating. <laughs> he was hallucinating. <laughs> you need Jesus. <laughs> okay, so we will see you at 1045 on Friday morning. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, as these cancer bills... I mean, the best oncologist i mean not even just in new mexico but one of the top 10 in the entire nation his name is um dr del cavoli and we see him on friday okay this is good like i was saying as those can here on out i mean things are gonna... what's, what's that we're putting on the credit card exactly as those cancer uh, it's bills just a deposit kind of thing start to add up how much of a deposit it's five thousand dollars Five thousand? Jesus. Yeah, probably gonna entice Walt to delve back into the meth industry. What's that? Just to start? As these start to add up. You tell me what I already know. So be it. We'll figure it out. Come on, don't get hung up on money here. I mean, we can always borrow from Hank. Absolutely not. Ah, oh, great. Oh, damn. Hey. Hey, pal. What's up? What? You're... You're acting all... You're... You're all... Why are you acting so... Weird? Son. You're, you're acting like nothing is going on. I love Walt Jr. <laughs> but a guy, give, you know what? Cook meth for him. Give him a hundred bags. hundred G's. Make more. Millions. Seven figures for Walt Jr. Oh, that's the, that's the furniture company from Crazy 8. <laughs> Tampico. He is that paranoid. <laughs> I mean, he's done nothing. Oh, no. He has done something wrong. But, like, in that situation. <laughs> We're talking major barnyard boo hog. Roll her in flour and look for the wet spot before you hit that man. You know what I'm saying? That kind of stink does not wash off. Sir? This guy's a freak. Right. What Sir? the fudge? <laughs> oh, yeah. There is no filter Sorry, uh, on that man's I, mouth. Oh, totally. Hi. What can I do for you? Which do? I, uh, any, any lint? Like some I, leper? Sorry, or... I, I would like a cashier's check in the full amount made out to oncology partners of New Mexico, please. Is that Jesse on the run? What the hell are you doing out here? Oh, it is. <laughs> hey, Dad. Hey, Mom. Got new patio furniture. Right on. 
leg. <laughs> my leg. <clears throat> <laughs> you can tell the type of kid Jesse was. <laughs> we are not doing this again. Um. No. We said we'd lay down the law. We lay down the law. We just have to be consistent about it. I like that we're getting more of an insight as well into Jesse's home life or previous home life this episode. Now his parents are just not going to babysit him every time. He has to make a future for his own. And the contrast between him and obviously and his little brother. <laughs> Environmental Consciousness Award. <laughs> what does that mean? Why you like recycle cans and shit? <laughs> I contacted the Albuquerque Journal and asked what kind of chemicals they used to bleach your paper. They wound up writing an article about it. Right on, little bro. This kid is making smart. mad inroads with the business community. This kid is all smart. Right. <laughs> now, hey, remember, not all learning comes out of books. I mean, if you ever, like, I don't know, I mean, advice. Because, yo, I mean, I've been through it all. I mean, for real. Hey, man, you, uh, you play the flute? It's a piccolo, actually. Dude, play some, uh, play some Jethro Tull. Hey guys, how we doing in here? We're, uh, we're good. Jay? Yeah, fine, Mom. Wow, it's good. It's, it's great. Family is so awkward, man. Like, at the same time, you can tell how you know, I love how Jesse is trying to, you know, vibe with his little brother. He's trying to create a spark right there, reignite a relationship. Um, and obviously you can tell they're raised in polar opposite ways. You have the academic right there. And you can see that Jesse is somewhat talented. He's just gone down the wrong path, probably got in with the wrong people, actually got in with the wrong people. And it's just a shame because you see it happen in real life where you see a talented individual um, it's happened with kids from my grade. You see them, they're so talented at school and they just meet the wrong people or take the wrong path and it doesn't turn out what you thought they were going to turn out to be. Um, and I guess the same case with Jesse, but you can see there's sparks of like brilliance with Jesse or there's sparks of like emotion outside of the drug world, outside of the, you know, um, uh, the highs he has in terms of the drugs, the freaking ice eyes he gets i don't know what it's called when i don't know the terminology but you get what i mean the ice hallucinations everything um and i feel like his parents are also wary um of what he's become so they don't want his um obviously his habits to rub off on young jake they want to protect jake at all costs and preserve um what jake is you know um got at the moment in terms of the path he's going on in terms of being that you know academic sports individual great within the community he's probably one of the leaders at school um and yeah but at the same time i feel kind of sorry for jesse because he's you know looking for that companion in life and it's just hard to come by walter <laughs> what the hell you see this or am i some criminal or something whatever whatever what, you, you think that's okay? Like, oh, we can't let that scumbag warp the mind of our favorite son. I was just... I'm the favorite? Saying that. Yeah, right. Practically all they ever talk about. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he probably got like a bad grade on that yep nf ridiculous apply yourself in life these dudes are in town they're looking to party and your stuff is like so sweet so what do you say hey you up for making some fat stacks? In with the wrong Somebody people. Everything you got. 
Fuck. Oh, no. oh no, I thought I was gonna change this into Jesse getting the drugs. Yes. Yes. Okay. <coughs> you can't be serious. <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Yo, I waited till the ball buster left. I mean, no offense. Who sent you? Huh? Huh? Hey, We're in a wire? Jesus. Huh? You're setting me up? Homo. A wire? You want a wire? I got a wire. Speak into the mic, bitch. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? A wire. Jesus. I don't know. It's like touch base. Touch base? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, what do you call a uh, debrief? Maybe we could. I like it debrief. Debrief? Wow, that's that's what you think we need debrief. Anyway, th that and I wanted to uh, wanted to you know tell you how much everybody digs that meth we cooked. <laughs> digs the meth we cooked. <laughs> Seriously, I got dudes that would give their left nut for a little more. I'm just saying. I mean, if you ever. You know, saw your way clear to, um, you know, you and I cooking a little more. Wow. Get the hell off my property. <laughs> what? I'm Go! just saying. And don't come back. Now. All right. All right, you know what? Gonna mention the money, isn't he? Four grand. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Your share from selling that batch. That's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Hey, I didn't smoke at all. Ah. Uh, the money is enticing, to be fair. I'd pick that up real quick if I were you. Because American money ain't built like Australian money. You guys, in the US, your money is paper. Ours is not. <laughs> I love how compared to... cell adenocarcinoma. Stage 3A, which means it's spread from the lung to the lymph nodes. Curable. I prefer the word treatable. But the treatments we have at our disposal can be very effective. Without making any promises, I can tell you that the specific course of radiation and chemotherapy I'm going to suggest has been successful. In certain cases, it's prolonged the patient's life and even resulted in remission. Oh, that's good to hear. Mm. Um, what, what about the side effects? You may find yourself unusually fatigued, not much energy. You won't want to get out of bed. You may lose weight due to reduced appetite and certain intestinal issues. Muscle aches and pains, gums that get sore and bleed. And, uh, of course, there's the possibility of nausea, although we'll prescribe an antiemetic and try to counteract that. Uh, possible kidney or bladder irritation. Again, the ear ringing sound coming in from, like, the first episode, I believe. Don't tell me she gonna find drugs. Ah. Oh. The housemaid found the joint. Is she gonna smoke it? No. Got anything to say? She's a snitch. How many times have you said, right here, and had the same conversation over and over again, where you look us in the eye and you plead ignorance, and you play on our emotions, and you tell us anything and everything you think we want to hear, just so we'll give you another chance. Mm -hmm. I got it. We are not going to have this in our house. We need you to leave. <laughs> they said they were going to lay down the law. They had to lay down the law. Thanks for not telling on me. Wait, what? Uh, you think I could have her back? Jakey! <laughs> Jake! <laughs>
Jesse took one for the boys. <laughs> he took one for the bros. It's skunk weed anyway. Damn. Little Jakey's a bad boy. And I ain't talking about Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. <laughs> You know, this is actually very hopeful. I like how positive Skylar is trying to stay. Did you hear me? I said this is really very, very hopeful. Oh. So can I call them and, and tell them you'll start next week? I just think that we need to discuss it a little more. That's all. What? is there to discuss you're gonna get the best treatment he's the best well there's the money discussion i think no ninety thousand dollars out of pocket maybe more there's a way walt there's financing um installment plans i i, I could always go back to work okay. Walt, there's always a way all right let's kind of say that there is a way and we spend all that money and it doesn't work Am I supposed to leave you with all that debt? No. Honey, I just don't want emotions ruling us. Maybe treatment isn't the way to go. Then why don't you just fucking die already? <sighs> just give up and die. Okay. Bam. <laughs> okay, you know what I'd say? There hasn't been. This is a very character centric and character driven episode. In fact, a lot of this show has been so far. Um, besides, uh, obviously, the action we got in the first episode, um, you know, revolving around cooking um, and the Emilio Crazy Eight situation, um, and a bit in the second episode, the third episode, cleaning the body and stuff. But even in the character driven scenes or the character scenes, I am so invested. It is so well written um, that I could, or I just did watch 50 minutes of characters interacting and talking and then dealing with this whole cancer situation and how it's affected everyone around them. And obviously dealing with Jesse's home life as well. And there's been a few bombshells along the way. And it's just not normal conversations going on. You don't know how each individual is going to react and respond. Jake, for instance, coming out of nowhere, like Randy Orton with the RKO and saying, thanks for taking the fall with me about the blunt. And then obviously right there, Walter Jr. Um, out of nowhere again saying, why don't you just F and die already? You know, um, don't fight. Don't do anything. Just die. And I guess that's going to be a little bit of a catalyst right there um, for Walter to get cooking again. You need to start cooking something up. Hold up. Let him cook. <laughs> I remember Walter drawing that, you know, that table last episode, weighing up all the pros and cons about killing crazy eight and he's got to weigh up the pros and cons of taking the treatment or not taking the treatment and even the pros and cons of starting the drug business again oh man i feel like this guy is gonna cop an ass whooping Is that just going to be someone to take his anger out on? <laughs> All that frustration boiled up on Ken wins. Maybe his car. Oh. <laughs> his car got an ass whooping. <laughs> Hopefully there's no security cameras. <laughs> the walk off. Oh! <laughs> A little bit of justice there. <laughs>
hey another fantastic episode of breaking bad like i said the consistency the consistency of this show is fantastic four episodes in solid 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 like even more than solid probably but yeah the character interactions are fantastic there's not a dull moment there's not a dull moment in the character interactions everything i feel like leads up to something and every character interaction i feel like is gonna have a payoff and it's just so well written i love it i love it i love it and i know why this is you know um touted as one of the greatest shows if not the greatest show of all time um and i'm only four episodes in and i feel like like i said at the beginning of the episode um there's a storm brewing on the horizon and yeah we're still slowly building up to that storm you know you can see it you can see it it's coming it's coming it's coming but um for now we're dealing with the character moments and i'm invested in that let alone the action and everything else hasn't hit the fan yet just i'm already invested in everything like i feel like i said what needed to be said in this episode it is great. It is great. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, been your boy Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.